Well, you know what? That's what I get for buying a headset. World's worst audio. Can't even hear myself talk. I decided to get in the tractor and drive. That's basically the gist of this. Let's see how far I got. Well, four miles later, believe it or not, made it to the lake. Cannot believe it, but finally here. Look at that, that peninsula where all those caravans are. Used to be an island. Oh, here comes a neighbor. Better see what they want. I've been following someone else that were dragging in front of me, but they left me in their dust days ago. Well, no worries, just turned out to be my neighbor. It's funny who you run into sometimes. Uh, I guess it's going to take this opportunity to turn around. Uh, it's really far out here. My back's hurting really bad. Haven't even turned around yet. So, well, at the same time, the lake's calling me. So, I think I'm just going to go see the lake. It's only a quarter mile more. And, you know, of course, trying to take half the mountain and all of the tumbleweeds with me because I have no idea how to tow something this long. But here we are. Almost to the lake. It's a good goal. It's been a long drive, really bumpy, so... I decided, you know what? Let's just take a quick jaunt up to the top here. Because the lake's like right there, you know? There's a high spot up ahead. Which will allow me to overlook the whole thing. How about this point? The sun's as hot as it can get in the day. And I've pretty much just been driving and driving. Hit a couple big boulders again. It's really working nice. Almost there. Stupid tumbleweeds. But look at all that dirt getting curled over. Man, I can't wait to drive this again to see what to see what difference it made. a little jet ski or something and put on the back of the tractor so after I'm done attacking my skeleton with the rocks I can just go relax at the lake. There we are. What a beautiful view. Still tripping out on how far I drove. Eight miles of grading today. Four there, four back. You know, I don't think anyone's ever going to jump out and say, Hey, it's road grading day. But I saw two other people out there grading the road, so I guess the weekends are where you grade the roads. I'm going to try to come out here more often. The drag's doing a really good job, so I just got to keep on it. Slowly but surely, I'll fix this whole road. Well, this looks like as good a spot as any to turn around. Man, look at that other drag someone made. Huge tractor tires. There's no way I could even pull that with this tractor. Oh, yeah. The name of this road I'm at is called Dunmovin' Way. Isn't that the best name ever for a road in the middle of nowhere? You know, all the neighbors got together and said, we're renaming it, and we're all done moving. This road is called Done Moving Way. Well, I'm back. Fell asleep for like four hours after that. Really, really pushed myself. You know, if you got back problems or anything like that, you might just want to break something into multiple trips, right? But after I saw that person just bust out there, drag, and get ahead of me, I was like, oh, I can follow him. And I did my best. But anyways, you can see here how the fine dust really builds up. The tractor does not like it at all. I'm going to have to clean my air filter 
after this for sure. Uh, my tractor was running a little hot as I was pulling in here. I also just want to take a sec to go over why I took the drag out again. Outside of, you know, just to try to improve the road. So, I had this brilliant idea that if I could take a piece of this fencing, I could put it underneath this big chain. And it would act as like a rock catcher, okay? Well... I got about a mile down the... No, not even a mile. Jeez, what am I thinking? I got to Larry's house, my neighbor, and I looked back and there was four rocks on it. But then it started to bend up and there was a couple rocks going under it. I realized too late that I should have put a flat metal bar over the tip of this fence. Then the rocks would have just hit that and then gone up and over it. But instead what was happening is the rock was halfway in the sand halfway on the fence, started pushing it up, and instead it pretty much did nothing. So, <laughs> trial and error, it's how you learn things. But I'm just, you know, trying to modify this stuff, make it a little better for me, more efficient. My neighbors actually go back and pop the boulders out of the way. That's the agreement we have. I drag, they kick the boulders. I was hoping I could cut down on the work a little. Maybe next version. Oh man, you know, it is another beautiful day here. It's been nice and just partly cloudy all day. Even though it was the hottest part of the day when I was dragging the road, it didn't even feel like that. It's just a beautiful day. I hope you enjoyed your day. Some people, it's not the best day in their memory, you know. sunset. I figured I'd drag my chair out here and try to enjoy it. Try to remember to upload this video. <laughs> Hooray! I was just thinking about the road situation. You know, when we first got here almost two years ago now, I can't believe it. Uh, the road was pretty much ridiculous and I don't even know how we made it in our tiny car. And since then, it's gotten incredibly bad. And uh, only recently is it starting to improve. And so, I'm really glad I'm seeing a whole bunch of the neighbors jump out there. They have their drags on the back of their trucks. And, you know, they're basically just chained with tires or whatever they got going on. And we're all hacking away at it, you know. For a while there, I think that because I'm not from around here and I'm like the youngest in the area, the newest... Uh, everyone else has way more tolerance for the dirt road than I did. So I was out there by myself, like no one else was dragging or improving the road forever, right? And so it was a little discouraging and I didn't do it as often as I should have. But then, when everyone started doing it, when I saw the drag start moving on the side of the road instead of lay there for six months, eight months, that's when it started getting me motivated. Like, oh, maybe I can, you know, make a better drag than the box scraper I got and, you know, make it even better and make the ride for all of us better. That's the thing is, it's a huge job, okay? And like seven miles of dirt road with as bad as, it, bad as it is, for one person with the small equipment is just completely daunting. Don't even want to do it. But when all the neighbors step in, when they jump in their vehicles and they're taking their time and their effort, busting their booties and their back on that road, that, uh, you know, that sense of community is established and you kind of realize we are all in this together. Um, we all drive the same road, all get our tires popped by the same rocks, and we're there right next to each other. So, it helps. If uh, you get yourself in a situation like this where you get property out in the middle of nowhere, just know that even if there is any road at all, that there's other people out there, and they're probably willing to help out, you know? Just, I don't necessarily mean go knock on the door and be like, hey, let's go grade the road. That would probably work great, too. But, no, just get out there, do it. Maybe they'll see you doing it, hop on theirs, get out there again. 
and then between all of you improve i think it's cool like uh that never would have happened in the city before to me you know that's where i live my whole life so things like this like the whole community thing it's a lot different uh it feels like real community like when i was a kid i grew up in a smaller town um have like a few memories of that but it uh was more like that small town people know each other help out i guess that's the point of this little rambling point is it's easy to help out when you got tons of neighbors helping each other out too try to be one of those neighbors it feels good i mean sure it's exhausting to go four miles out four miles in bouncing your everything around you know i had to stop a couple times just get out and walk around because it's just too much for my skeleton but it's definitely like a necessary job, and I don't really have that long of a window to do it within, you know. Uh, the fair weather we have right now is going to last not that long. And when it's pouring rain or snow out there, the drag becomes very heavy and my tractor just cannot do it. So, now's a great time. And also, you know, after the monsoon we had like a month or two ago now, it's... uh really changed the road and now I can't get material here anymore um, it's just too bad like I had you know roads uh, sorry loads of gravel for the roads <laughs> delivered here on this parcel but now after the washout there's one lane that got so narrow that their giant dump truck can't get here anymore so if I want anything I'm gonna have to get one load dropped off right there to fill it in and then one load to drive across it and deliver to me you know or keep it this road improvement and eventually I'll get building materials here again but yeah it's uh it's funny the problems that you throw yourself at that aren't any plans you know you're like get a property get water get power get sewer get shelter and all that check 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 or whatever you know you don't really think about oh yeah the road how do i maintain it or <laughs> make it so it doesn't kill my vehicles or whatever something to figure out i tried calling the county and stuff i never got one call back <laughs> and i was wondering like why don't these people call me back about trying to come out and grade my like tiny like uh situation of road and then i hear about this company who got like a contract with the two counties that connect to go from one place to this other city like uh 30 miles away and they're redoing like eight lanes of highway traffic and so i think they were talking about the amount of money was like in the tens of millions and so yeah I can't pay you tens of millions to come out and grade my road. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah. So good luck getting someone else to come grade your road. <sighs> Neighbor connections. And learning how to put stuff together. Making do with what you got. That's how it is. I'm still laughing at my grader. It's like I paid 400, 500 bucks for that box scraper that came with that tiny tractor. And it does not work to grade the road. It is horrible. <clears throat> and the grade that I have is put together of like six chains between mine and Larry's family. An old weird <laughs> trailer hitch. And a blade off an old farm implement. Now that is ingenuity, I guess. Ingenuity is not really the word I'm looking for. It's not like we're a genius because we put the stuff together. It's just, it's a sort of the attitude that comes with homesteading. You put together what you have around here because it's too far and too expensive into town. It's going to break your pocketbook going to do it. I hope nobody thinks there's a point to this.
like sitting here watching the sunset rambling because I mean it's watching the sunset that's what you're supposed to do is go talk and just BS while you're enjoying not really a rare event of mother nature or anything but in my opinion one of the most beautiful I can't wait to get back in the SUNY Waffle Garden and establish another row. I'm just sitting here staring at it. All my tomatoes did great. All the herbs did great. Harvested one of everything, pretty much. I need to either increase the number of species that I got in there or the variety so I can always be harvesting. Because now I'm just sitting here like waiting for the tomatoes to turn orange. I should come out here every sunset and just talk about the plans I got for the homestead every week or something. That's what me and Bianca do. When you go watch the sunset, which, by the way, the sunset doesn't always occur at the same time per day. It always is changing, but it's predictable. So when you force yourself to stop and go watch the sunset or whatever... It's a really nice kind of ritual kind of way to build in a wind down into your day. Talk about how your spouse is doing. What's going on. If they're worried about anything. If anything changed since the other day. If anything else needs to be done. What we should go make for dinner. <laughs> you know, really exciting things like that. It's okay also to just watch the sunset and do nothing. In actuality, that's usually the point of it, but... Usually ends up becoming like a planning session for us. I think because... For us, it's really relaxing to sit there and just kind of imagine what the property is going to be like. What direction we want to take the, the farm or the homestead. <whistles> Aria? Yeah, I thought you might be over there. You know that's an off-limit zone, girl. Come. Come here, pup. Were you... Were you being naughty? Good dog. You're a good dog. Most of the time. Oh yeah, you know what else the sunset time is a great for? Playing with your animals. The heat of the day is gone, especially if you got a black dog. I think I'm going to go do that right now. Have a wonderful evening, y'all. See you next time. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I uh, have really no idea. <laughs> I appreciate your subscription. Your random comments, your likes, your dislikes, your criticisms, your suggestions, your observations. All of it. Keep watching. I'm going to keep making this land into something, huh? Have a good evening.